Let's go. Hello, today is Tuesday, the 6th day of September 2022, and this is your lab boy today. We want to discuss the enduring, ever-enduring love of Christ, and we'll be reading from the scriptures in chapter 8 of the epistle of Paul to the Romans. And when you get there, come along with me to the 31st verse and if you're set let's go what then shall we say to this if god is for us who is against us he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all will he not also give us all things with him who shall bring any charge against god's elect it is god who justifies who is to condemn is it Christ Jesus who died? Yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are being killed all day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor things to come nor past nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god in christ jesus our lord amen this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We need to be able to boldly declare this kind of love that Paul was committing to the Romans. Because the Romans that we are talking about now is the Jews in Rome. Persecution was everywhere then. The Roman emperors were making life difficult for everybody. In fact, it was even slightly good in their own time. At least they allowed you to preach, to travel. There was a piece of the Roman Empire that they call Pax Romana. You know, you could worship your God perhaps until 70 AD when again the Roman soldiers struck and destroyed, you know, Jerusalem. But at the point in time that this was being written because I believe that well, let me say most scholars believe that Romans was written maybe about 60 AD, at least in the 60s AD, so before the temple was destroyed. But in spite of that, there was still persecution. And so Paul was trying to encourage the Jews in Rome that whatever the persecution could come their way because they were directly under the nose of the emperor. And uh, so, but they should bear all the persecution and they should still remain in the love of Christ. Are we not having persecution all around us, all over the world today? Is there no persecution in Russia striking at Ukraine anyhow? Is there no persecution in different parts of my own country, Nigeria, where some people, either on account of ethnicity or religion, will make life difficult for others, not of their own extraction? Is there no persecution around you in terms of governance and so many other things is there no persecution even in the church among the priests so all these things do happen and when they do happen what should be uppermost to you is that your love for christ must not be affected in any case and whatever other things that you may not be able to cope with you must be able to cope 
with the love of Christ, you must still continue to be in love with Christ because Christ loved you first. He gave his life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus Christ, to die for your sins and for my sins. So to what extent should you also not go to showcase your love back? As I'm telling this story, yours makes me to remember my mom that she would go to any length to sacrifice anything. There were times I would see her lifting her bed up when I was in school to see if she still had any change, any money, and then some old rotten notes that she had forgotten there, she would bring out. But some people may not believe this story because they thought, oh, these ones are born with silver spoons. They would never know that there were times when we also had to go through all those situations. But the love, the enduring love of Christ was such that the enduring love of our parents also sustained us to God be the glory. I'm inviting you to that enduring love of Christ if you are not yet in Christ because there is nothing like it. Do you want to get into Christ and begin to enjoy the enduring love of Christ? All you need to do is just give your life. Say this prayer after me. Pronto, it is done. Are you set? So let's go. Say, Lord, I come to you right now. I want to give my life to you. I've been told about the enduring love of Christ. That I also want to enjoy. And I also want to be able to give you my own love, to give you my own life, stay by you in all situations. Therefore, accept me today as one of yours. Forgive me of all the sins of my past. I pray in Jesus' name. So you are welcome to the fold of Christ. Find a Bible-believing church where you can continue to learn about the enduring love of Christ. I always recommend an Anglican church close to you. And in Oshobo, Oshun State, Nigeria, come to the Anglican church over here to the extension in the chapel hall of the Olive Branches Middle and High Schools along with Yiko and Gopi Mugod and Drive there. Join us every Wednesday 5 p.m. for our midweek services and on Sunday 10 o'clock in the morning. There together we can enjoy the ever enduring love of Christ. As you go out today, say this prayer. You say, bring me to this reality every day that your love for me endures forever, O Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So go out today. Enjoy the enduring love of Christ. I judge you faithful I call you faithful I call you good